the flushing of Flint. And it's done by Jordan Cheriton. I wanted to show you a little bit, a little bit of the trailer. Let's watch a little bit of it together, shall we? Here we go. I told me to turn the stuff on, let it run for a minute, and then catch the water. You said they had let it run and then put the sample yeah, bottle in. Yeah. Did they tell you to let the water run first for a little bit mm -hmm. and then put the bottle in there? Yes. Or to immediately put the bottle in there? No, let it wait. There was just Almost like this eureka moment, this light bulb moment that went off yesterday as I was talking to uh, a resident here. And when he told us that he was told to let the water run <laughs> for four to five minutes before testing, our, all our fucking, all our eyes like came out of its sockets because you're not supposed to run your water before you test. When you run the water for several minutes before you test, that that um, basically eliminates most of the lead and you get a lower lead reading because you've run the water. When the water crisis is over and somebody stands up and says, hey, the water crisis is over, will anybody believe it? No. 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 I know you can play games with whether or not you allow water to run before you test it or how long you let it run, things like that. I don't trust the city of Flint, the governor, any of them. I'm all broke out. I'm all broke out. I have, I have picked my own pictures. I'm all broke out. I'm diabetic. I have, look it, I have like whips. And I, this is from the water. Itching, breaking out, stuff like that. My teeth. Yeah, so, and I've had new morning. I'm scared, and I hear. Go ahead, get it. Bro, I'm telling you. And I get them like, just, just, bro. And they were worse. My daughter did have a miscarriage. And you go to the doctor, they got the doctor saying, oh, it's okay. It's not okay. I'm living with this. I'm living proof. You know, I'm here. Y'all go home to your own residence at the end of the day. When everything is done, I'm living it. It doesn't make any sense in this life. So yeah. that is from the upcoming documentary, The Flushing of Flint. Now, we all know uh, the problems with Flint and... Uh, the reporter who's been most on the ground there has been Jordan Cheriton from Status Coup, and uh, he's with us now. Hey, Jordan, how are you? Hey, Jimmy, great to have you. So I'm showing part of the trailer for your upcoming documentary, and you went back to Flint. Uh, you've been there a lot. You actually went back there recently this summer, and you interviewed uh, how many people did you interview? Uh, we spoke with 150 uh, residents in Flint. And you knocked on about 450 doors. You talked to 100 and some people. And we just showed you clips of what they're... So the water still isn't clean in Flint. Even though I saw Barack Obama go there and take a <laughs> sip of water, it's not fixed? Uh, they would they would want you to believe it's fixed there in the state government and, of course, uh, President Obama. But uh, we did something radical. We, we just knocked on doors, you know, old school. And we found that... The state of Michigan, during the water testing there, uh, before they gave the all clear sign, they actually illegally flushed residents' water lines right before taking the lead samples, which is against the EPA's uh, drinking water regulations. If you're testing water for lead, you're supposed to have water be totally stagnant for six hours and then take the water sample right away. Even running the water for 30 seconds to a minute before sampling, you could be flushing out Ex extremely high levels of lead, and we found uh, that they did this in uh, at least at least 35 homes, Jimmy. So, so they did give them a clean bill of health for the water. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So basically, uh, all this door knocking, we knocked on uh, the large majority of doors we knocked on were part of the state of Michigan's official focus group of homes. So the state of Michigan had in 2016. They started with 650 homes in Flint. They were going to continue to test these homes over two years to see if the levels were improving over that period of time. So this was the official group of homes that Michigan was using to say, hey, the levels were improving. We're now meeting the EPA's 
totally arbitrary, ridic ridiculous lead level of 15 parts per billion. So we found that in at least 35 homes, obviously we knocked on 450, a lot of people didn't answer or weren't home, but in dozens of homes, state officials actually went into the residents' homes. Uh, the residents were just happy they were there. They didn't know how the testing was supposed to be done. And state officials actually ran residents' water lines right before testing, which is basically cooking the data. You're basically flushing out the lead. And voila, you get let low levels. We've found people that uh, in that trailer, there's a one young woman named Amanda, she's 35, never had a health problem in her life uh, before the water switch. And uh, an official came to her home, ran her water for a minute before taking the sample. The results, no lead. She thinks everything's fine. She goes back to drinking the water. Uh, she has her kids drink the water. She now has thyroid cancer and spots on her kidney. Uh, I've been clear, like, I'm not a doctor. I can't say for certain what caused what. But she didn't have, uh, she didn't have any health problems before the water switch. We found homes where they went in, they flushed these residents' water lines. All of a sudden, you're getting really low lead levels. And then the EPA went into those same homes, like two months later, tested the same sinks in the kitchen. They didn't flush, and they found extremely high lead levels. So all of this uh, illegal testing was basically done out in the open. The state didn't really expect anyone to look. Uh, so, yeah, we broke that story about two weeks ago. Uh, Congressman Ro Khanna has called for an investigation. So here is, so here is Ro Khanna. I have it. Here is Ro yep. Khanna retweeting your tweet about it. Uh, and he says it's no brainer to have an investigation. And he tags you. Yep. Uh, also, Tulsi Gabbard retweeted your tweet. And she says the people of Flint are still being poisoned and cheated. I visited Flint and heard from people who still can't bathe in their own homes due to multiple toxins in water and who rely on charity for bottled water. There must be an investigation, accountability, and clean water for Flint. So uh, here's, uh, here's, your, here's your tweet. Uh, exclusive Michigan broke EPA regulations by flushing water and telling residents to, uh, to write before water lead sampling in Flint. Governor Snyder and state said residents are having some confusion about the kind of testing that's happening. And uh, here's just let me give you one where here's uh, another one from Rokana. He says, after Michigan poisoned Flint four and a half years ago, Governor Snyder's officials broke EPA regulations to lower lead levels. Free water needs to be restored and an investigation opened. Thanks to Jordan Sheridan for your reporting. That's when Congressman Rokana and, of course, our favorite Susan Sarandon said shady test testing practices in Flint showing safe lead levels in Flint. Check out Jordan Sheridan's article about why Flint's water still isn't safe. And so you found out, you went and knocked on these doors, you talked to these people, you found out that when the state came in to do their testing, they were doing it incorrectly, just like you said, they were flooding the water run for 30 seconds to a minute or longer, and that's the against protocol for how you're supposed to test water. Everyone knows that. So that does that mean that the people doing the testing also knew that, Jordan? Uh, I can't get in their brains, but I'm pretty confident based on the state of Michigan's YouTube video with testing instructions that said, do not flush your water <laughs> before taking the samples. Uh, they knew what they were doing. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's, it's even worse than the officials were themselves going into residents' homes and um, flushing the water first. They then told the residents who were the state, the testing was supposed to be done by the residents. The EPA told us. Officials weren't supposed to be going into homes and testing for the residents. They were supposed to just drop the test kits off for the residents with the instructions. Really? So here, here, so, you, have, here you have state officials going into homes, basically cooking the data to get lower lead levels. And then on the way out, they told these poor people, hey, when you test, because you're, you're the ones that are supposed to be testing, run the water before, run the water for four to five minutes. I mean, we found in some instances, Jimmy, they ran the water for 10 to 15 minutes uh, before taking samples. It, it's, it's a real environmental scandal. Well, flushing before you draw a sample is a violation of law. Uh, the, pur the purpose of testing the first draw is to detect how much lead and copper have leached into the water overnight. And once it's flushed out, it defeats the purpose of the test. So you are on to that. So is there anyone else that's reporting this besides you? Oh, I could write a book about 
trying to get corporate media to pay attention to this. No, nobody else is reporting this. Yeah. I want to I want to make clear uh, it, it was uh, my business partner for Status Quo, Jen Dyes. She's a great journalist. She knocked on doors with me. Her and I. Uh, there's a lot of uh, corporate outlets that were originally going to publish this and then chose not to for various reasons. Uh, but we are the only ones who did this over the summer. We knocked on 400 doors. We just went back two weeks ago to knock on more doors. Recently, we just found not only have they been illegally flushing, but they actually have certain homes that are on the official state tests that they're using to declare the water fine that literally have full filtration systems in their home. You're testing homes that have state-of-the-art filtration systems. That's against the testing protocol, too. You're supposed to be testing without filters on uh, and all that. So basically, uh, Jimmy, I mean, I, I know that the country's corrupt. We've had plenty of conversations about that. But I was kind of I was stunned when I saw this because literally you have environmental officials going into people's homes and a lot of the times the, the parent with the children are standing there watching them as they knowingly flush out lead and then put a sample bottle in to get lower lead levels. So is the, so they're, they don't have local newspapers or local news stations in Flint? Uh, they have uh, quote-unquote news, which basically have uh, breathlessly regurgitated what Rick Snyder, the governor, and the environmental agency, which if you follow the Flint water crisis, it was this very environmental agency that we caught cheating that actually caused the lead crisis in the first place. They didn't add the proper corrosion control chemicals into the water, and that's why lead leached off into the water. They, uh, this environmental agency and Governor Snyder, their response was not to, um, it was not to say you're lying. It was not to say these residents are lying to you. It was to say, we think these residents are confused. We think they are a little confused who came in their homes and how, how they tested the water. Uh, I don't need to tell you, Jimmy, uh, Flint is 57% uh, black and 42% poverty rate. So you take, you take that for what you want. Uh, I read that as uh, let's, let's, call the poor, let's call the poor minorities dumb. They don't know what's going on. Um, I will tell you, uh, I haven't really uh, talked about this much. Uh, if you want the behind the scenes, this story was supposed to be published in Newsweek magazine. Uh, we were about to publish it in Newsweek. Uh, J Jen and I had booked a flight. We were going to report on the ground there. And then Newsweek literally killed the story the day before it was set to publish. And I quote, I was told, uh, like in politics, when you're explaining, you, you're losing. So Newsweek said it was too complicated to explain the story for their readers. <laughs> what? Come on. And they also said we didn't have enough data, which I, I couldn't understand because I don't know many other journalists knocking on 450 doors. Uh, if, if there are, I'd love to talk to them. So, 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 so Newsweek kills the piece. They don't give a credible reason why. So like the local NBC, do they have a local NBC TV station that with a news department? Oh, Jimmy, they have a local NBC, a CBS, an ABC. I mean, they got they got plenty of uh, resources. But the problem is, as I've seen in Standing Rock, I've seen in Flint and East Chicago and Alabama, and I could go on. Um, the media is less a, a, a microscope uh, than it is uh, a press release. Um, these media outlets, you'd be stunned. A lot of these me local media outlets actually get subsidies from the very government that they're supposed to be holding accountable. Um, a lot of these local Flint outlets actually get tax subsidies from the state. Um, so what I actually reached out to one reporter uh, in, I, oh, excuse me, I reached out to the D Detroit Free Press. I, I could show you the emails if you'd like to see. They didn't want to publish it, and I quote, uh, because there's a lot of other cities in Michigan with water problems. So I said, I said, yeah, well, you know, let me get on my broom and, and go to every last city and let's first expose what's going on in Flint and I'd be happy to go cover the other ones. So you're not going to cover this because other cities have water problems. Well, did other cities uh, have their water switched to a river body with dead bodies and toxic uh, waste parts from General Motors? Are, are other cities four and a half years later, literally, there are, re there are residents in Flint. There are lines in Flint. You're not going to see this on CNN, MSNBC, New York Times. We went in July. There are lines, Jimmy, for three to five hours at local churches to wait to get two cases of bottled water. 
not from the state of Michigan, because they shut down the water pods, from donated water around, uh, around the country. Uh, in some other parts, like Haiti and other places with water contamination, this is what you see there. But this is happening in an American city, and uh, it's very, very disconcerting. And I, I, I could go down the list. We had so many media. I reached out to probably 50 to 100 media outlets to try to publish this story. I'd say a good quarter of them were interested, but asked me, is there a way to connect it to Trump? Ah, uh, so there's a governor and there's a there's a switch now in power in Michigan. There's going to be a Democratic governor. Correct. Uh, does anybody do you think that there's anybody talking that that'll make a difference? Uh, the governor elect uh, Gretchen Whitmer is aware uh, of what we found. She's quoted in the story. Uh, she gave me a quote. Uh, Shooty, who is running against her, who uh, is a Republican and a Trump mini me, gave me a quote. Uh, believe it or not, Jimmy, there's a lot of uh, quote unquote progressive politicians that are aware of what we found because I've been harassing them very, very kindly uh, via email and phone call to do something. Um, but unfortunately, it seems that, uh, you know, everybody talks about Flint when a comedian at the White House Correspondents' Dinner has a one liner. Uh, you know, Flint still doesn't have clean water. Then you had the guys from Pod Save America and all these people with their with their righteous indignation on Twitter. But in practice, when journalists have found that they have literally cooked up the lead data to falsely declare the water safe, I've ha you know I've sent this to Congressman Elijah Cummings, who I have respect for. Uh, I haven't gotten a response. I've sent this to Nancy Pelosi, to Chuck Schumer, to Steny Hoyer, to Dick Durbin, to just about every Democrat you could think of. No response. Uh, we have sent this to celebrities, just tossing tossing stuff at a wall. Uh, very little response. So have it, you, it's very very disconcerting. Have you been able to track down any of the the people who were hired by the state to go in and do that testing? Well, uh, there's another element here that uh, a lot of people don't realize. Here's a little behind the scenes. When you're filing freedom of information requests to find out who did they send to these homes, uh, what can I get the emails about, you know, you talking about the process, anything. They're quoting you $5,000, $7,000, $10,000 for a freedom of information request. Uh, we, did find, uh, we did find two people. Uh, one was a worker uh, for the core program. There was a program called the core program. It was Flint residents that were trained by the environmental agency, the state environmental agency. They were supposed to go around to homes, make sure residents had filters on their water, help them put the filters on if they didn't know. Uh, they were not supposed to be testing residents' waters. Uh, they were trained by MDEQ, the, the state environmental agency. So the state environmental agency also used these workers as useful idiots to go in, illegally flush residents' water, and also give the residents instructions, run your water before you test. We did speak with one of those workers and she confirmed that she had gotten a lot of complaints from residents that they were being given instructions to flush their lines. So yeah. as, Aaron, as Aaron Brockovich uh, said in, in the story, she, she uh, gave us a few comments. I mean, the only reason you would flush residents' water lines before a test for EPA regulatory compliance is to get a false number. It's cheating, it's against the law, and yeah, well, here's the quote from the story. Aaron Brockovich says the only reason to do this would be to obtain a clear sample and report false information. Yes. And, and, uh, the mo and you can I just can't believe. So you're the only one there. Really? This this seems like a local reporter could make his name off this story and no one will report this, that they screw that they're giving on purpose false readings and they're doing it incorrectly. You're the only one reporting this. That's correct. And I will say that, um, you know, there are a lot, you know, for example, uh, you know, I might get in trouble for saying this, but to hell with it. This story was also supposed to be published uh, for Vice, Vice, Vice Media. Uh, we were about to publish it with Vice Media. Uh, they were all gung ho. You know, Vice has that reputation as a, you know, ra rabble rousers and, uh, you know, very uh, progressive. And we landed in Flint. Uh, supposed to be published that week, and I got an email uh, killing the story um, because Vice, apparently at that moment, uh, a month after we first communicated on the story, decided to Google my name. <laughs> and they didn't like, uh, you know, some of the things that uh, were said about me that, uh, unfortunately, I got uh, falsely smeared last year. 
Uh, but so Vice, uh, Vice had it, and I even offered Jimmy. I even offered to take my name off the story, and I offered to just have my business partner and co-reporter Jen take the lead because it's not about me. I want I want to do this. I want to get the truth out for Flint. So we offered to take our name, my name off the story. Uh, they would not budge. And then Newsweek suddenly uh, was too incompetent <laughs> to explain it to their audience. And as far as the local media, the local media is the most uh, frustrating. And frankly, um, they are abdicating their responsibility to the people of Flint and these local communities because the local media, I've spoken at bars off the record with reporters from Flint who I told them exactly what I had. They knew I, what I had was true. And, and they, they said, uh, I, I don't want to say which, which outlet because it was off the record, but they said they won't touch this with a 10-foot pole. Why? Why? Because they're not media, Jimmy. They are stenographers for the state. So, I mean, do you think that they're, they're – that I don't understand what's – you know, normally you're not allowed to report stuff because of us. Uh, you know, there's a, oh, there are advertisers. You don't want to screw over our advertisers, or, um, you know, hey, our company owns stock in this company, or, but none of this is the case here. I don't understand. So that's why I'm still, I'm. Aren't you? Are are you, are you flummoxed by why no one will cover this? I because I am. Are you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, honestly, I've, I've I I don't mean this to sound dramatic, but like. I have I've sat with mothers who are having heart palpitations from, from right. lead poisoning. I've I've seen kids like I've talked to kids that used to know the full alphabet that now forget after F. Uh, like this is this is personal to me. You know, this is yeah. I'm not a I'm not a sociopath. You know, like, yeah, I'm not neutral. Uh, I'm not neutral to people being poisoned and then left to die. So I'm not only dumbfounded uh, that the media in, in Michigan. And by the way, Jimmy, I reached out to all these outlets and I said, Throw your reporter as the first person under the story. I will take second fiddle to it. This was not about, you know, status quo, breaking a major story and, you know, being able to right. brag. This was about the people of Flint, because at this very moment, based on the reporting, there are people that are drinking water there because they shut down the water pods and they're, to they're too poor to drink, to buy bottled water. Flint, uh, most of these residents are too poor or don't even have public or don't have a car. Uh, there's 20 percent don't have cars or public trans or transportation. Wow. So they're drinking from the tap because the state has said it's safe again. Well, we found that they cook the data in it. Not it's not like two homes. We found dozens of homes. And to answer your question on the media, from from my experience talking to local reporters, essentially at these media outlets, they are spineless. They do get, in some cases, uh, they do, do have business with the government, state and federal. Uh, their owners, you know, look at the Huffington Post, for example. Ariana Huffington was very cushy <laughs> with a lot of people in the government and the Obama administration. It, it's the same way in, on the state level. Uh, sometimes these media outlets also get grants from the government. So I'm... I'm beyond dumbfounded. It, it, it's I don't know if you didn't get into journalism for stories like this, you need to get out, uh, whether you're local or national. Well, I, I couldn't agree more. And so I want to let everybody know if you show this, this you have a GoFundMe up to help support uh, your media organization, which is called Status Coup. It's right there on uh, your baseball hat and your <laughs> uh, and your and your very sharp uh, fleece. Thank you. Um, so here it is. I'll show people. There it is. It's the uh, word. People go GoFundMe what slash what? As always. There it is. GoFundMe.com slash status dash coup dash news. Yeah, we've raised uh, $21,000 since launching two months ago uh, from, I think, 320 people. It's kind of miraculous because nobody fucking knows I when I'm live on YouTube. <laughs> right. Nobody gets nobody gets notifications. Nobody yeah, they're even doing sees the, the videos. So they're really trying to suppress independent journalism. And here's a good reason why, because this is the only guy I know who's covering the story. It's Jordan Cheriton. This is a story that's not being covered, even when he hands it to people like Newsweek and local and the Detroit Free Press and local. They won't even when he hands it to them, they're not reporting it. And so right. if you would like to support this kind, go over to uh, Jordan's GoFundMe page and uh, make a donation so you can get some more of this kind of reporting. L literally, there's no one else doing it. And even and even now that you are reporting it, they're not re-reporting it. Right. It's, it's an it's, you know, um, 
And we can't let pe- this is, uh, you know, this is why when Trump says the media sucks, uh, it lands with people because people on the left know they suck and people on the right know they suck. And that doesn't mean that Trump doesn't also suck. Right. right? Uh, that's the thing people can't get in their minds, that maybe there's no good guys in this fight with Trump and the media. Maybe the media also has been letting us down and Trump is also horrible. Well, so- I could tell you, I could tell you, Jimmy, real quick, uh, as as big as. Obviously, the story is about Flint and this illegal testing, but I could literally teach a class now about the corporate media because between getting responses that, A, can you connect it to Trump or uh, we don't have the bandwidth to do this, literally I got from ProPublica to uh, the New York Times actually, Jimmy, tried to steal this story from me. That was, a, that was another interesting thing. Uh, I reached out to the New York Times, who I don't particularly like their reporting, but it is the New York Times, and I'll bite my lip to get it out on the New York Times. They gave me some smug response that we have uh, reporters in the Midwest that routinely look in uh, to Flint. So if we were going to do this, we'll, we'll tap into our reporters. And right after that email, I get a call from my main source in Flint that she just got a call from the New York Times. Ah, Asking about illegal testing, and I had sent them, not the whole story, but bullets of my findings. So instead of actually co-bylining it with an independent journalist, uh, the New York Times just basically tried to steal it, which I found very, I guess, gratifying, but also very upsetting. So it's it's very upsetting, and the most important thing, uh, I could talk about the media all day, but the people of Flint and the governor who is now exiting, Governor Snyder, who for some corrupt reason, has never had a criminal charge on him, uh, they have basically swept this under the rug by illegally testing. And the people of Flint, including children, including the elderly, including uh, poor black people, there's a lot of poor white people, are at risk because the testing has been compromised. That's the main problem. Jordan Sheridan, great work. Everybody go check him out. Uh, Status Coup, what's your website? Statuscoup.com. You can enter your email. We're trying to grow our email list Uh, So go to statuscoup.com and enter your email. Okay, thanks, buddy. Thanks, Jimmy. Our next live Jimmy Dore show is February 1st in Burbank, California. Go to jimmydorecomedy.com for a list of all our live shows. And please become a premium member if you can. Become a patron. It's the way we support this show because they're coming at us. And we give you bonus. We give you hours of bonus material every week. Check it out. Become a patron. And if you can, make sure you're still subscribed. They unsubscribe people every day. I know it sounds crazy. It only takes a second. Please make sure and click that bell when you subscribe so they'll send you a notice when we